if you want to invest into long-term growth, you simply need to be invested into emerging markets. They represent 50%, so half the global GDP, but only 11% of market capitalization. So if you want to put it very, very bluntly, emerging markets should go up four times in, <laughs> in value if they were to represent 50% of the market capitalization of the world. So th that is the big picture view. Um, to make it slightly more concrete, perhaps, take a country like, like India. You have 800 million people below the age of, of 35. Um, that country is going to grow by 6-7% for very many years ahead. And in short, it's about people getting a better life. They buy the first dishwasher, microwave, motorcycle, car, etc. And we, we want to be part of, of helping them do that. I think another key reason um, to invest into emerging markets is, is the valuation argument. Uh, and if you look at emerging markets currently, they're trading at around 11 times PE. Uh, for 2024, which is a very significant discount to the S&P 500, which is trading at 18 times. And that's, that's a particularly big discount if, if, you, if you look at the, the difference in underlying economic growth that Jacob was talking about earlier, with the IMF expecting emerging market economies to outgrow developed markets by 2.5 and 2.6% in the next two years. And that's one of the largest uh, uh, differences we've seen for a long time, which is a typically good sign for emerging market outperformance. Typically, fund managers look at an index. They choose companies that are in the index. We do not look at an index. We simply choose the companies that we think would be the best performers. We have an active share of, of 80%, which is very, very high. And I think we have a truly unique portfolio for emerging markets. The average portfolio manager tenure is 16 years at his capital. So we simply have a team of individuals, including myself, who has been doing this for a very long period of time. In emerging markets, it's very important that you have been through a couple of crises. Um, these markets go up and down like most markets, but, but typically the, the crises, unfortunately, are a bit deeper and maybe more difficult to maneuver. For us, ESG is not only a nice word, it's something we've been doing since the very start of East Capital. Sustainability means different things to different managers, but for us it means that uh, sustainability is integrated at every part of our investment process. So in the screening part, we screen out sectors that we consider to cause unacceptable levels of harm, such as fossil fuels, most mining companies. Then in the ideas generation, we look for companies that are exposed to these really exciting sustainability themes, such as inclusive finance, renewable, uh, the renewable value chain. But then before adding a stock to the portfolio, we carry out a very rigorous ESG assessment using proprietary tools to make sure that the stock meets our very high ESG requirements, which gives the portfolio a very strong quality tilt. We then further use voting and engagement as a way to ensure that our portfolio companies continue to improve and develop. And then one area where our fund differs to, to, to many others is that all the sustainability analysis is done by the investments teams themselves, which we think is logical because obviously it is us that know the companies and the countries they're operating in very well. But I think what this does is it really helps ensure that sustainability work is not just a, a tick the box exercise, but really feeds into our investment decisions. Our GEMS fund has an Article 9 classification, and that refers to some EU legislation that basically asks all fan fund managers to self-classify how they incorporate sustainability into their investment processes. Article 9 is the highest classification, and it means that we're not only targeting superior risk-adjusted returns, but also very explicit sus sustainability outcomes. And for us, that means we're investing in companies that drive positive SDG, Sustainable Development Goal Outcomes, across their value chains. In terms of performance, um, our aim was never to be the best fund. Our, our aim was always to create a long-term consistent track record. Since the inception of the fund, we are a top 2 or 3% of all emerging markets funds. 
But please don't forget that those, most of those funds can buy, for example, oil companies that have been doing great for the past couple of years. We cannot buy those, such a company as, as an Article 9 fund. So um, I think in terms of, of Alpha or Up Performance, we've really done great be, being one of those top funds. Uh, but perhaps more importantly, we, we got there without taking very large risks, uh, without owning fossil fuel and, and many other sectors. Hence, on a risk-adjusted basis, I would, I would probably argue that the performance is even better.